My name is Mark Anthony. My Div 3 is titled The Influence of Different Dairy Management Practices on Seasonal Nitrous Oxide Productions. My name is Jana Farrell and my Division 3 project was titled Mapping Trace Metal Distribution in Chinchoro Mummy and Egyptian Dental Tissue, Toxicological and Nutritional Implications. So my name is Daniel Taub and my Division 3 is on how endocrine disruption affects the thyroid axis and brain development. My name is Alinda Wood, and my Division 3 is called the Molecular Biology of Memory. I'd always studied ecosystems ecology, which is something that examines how energy flows through various ecosystems, and I'd always been interested in something more specific called trace biogeochemistry, and that honestly entails quite a bit of the different gases that contribute to uh, global climate change, and I knew I wanted to focus quite a bit on that. And since I'm very interested in where our food comes from, I wanted to look at agriculture and how that relates to it. And I decided to specify on nitrous oxide because almost 70 to 90 percent of nitrous oxide emissions result from agricultural practices. And as somebody who lives in the Northeast and plans to live here for a while, I wanted to look at the most prevalent farming practice, which is dairy productions. So I decided to compare different management strategies for nitrous oxide, carbon dioxide, and methane emissions. And I think everything I had done with the ecosystems ecology work prior to that had led me up until a nice point to address this question. Leading up to my Div 3, I studied a lot of chemistry, and so my Division 3 project looked at trace metal distribution in um, dental tissue. And dental tissue is a really interesting tissue to look at because it's highly inert. It doesn't really degrade over time, and the calcium that makes up most of the tissue can be replaced by various trace metals in the environment and in um, and from nutritional sources. Yes, so for my Division 3 um, I was interested in learning and memory but I wanted to look at what the fundamental molecular mechanisms of learning and memory were. So I used this organism called C. elegans which is this little teeny tiny roundworm, it's a nematode. Um, but they're really great because they're easy to manipulate genetically and they're very, very simple, but they're not so simple that they don't share things in common with humans. My work focused on how thyroid hormone and endocrine disruption can affect brain development. And specifically, the region that I looked at was the corpus callosum, which is right here, this sort of white uh, line here. I had a field and I had a laboratory component to my project. In the field, I had a bunch of work that I have to do. I had to uh, first select my sites. I had to find two farms that were in a similar region, ones that were influenced by the same temperature and had very similar properties. So I found out that at the University of New Hampshire they had two university managed research farms that were pretty perfect for this. And on top of that I had to find the proper sites to do it with. So I collected soil from each site at different places. One was in a lower elevation, a mid elevation, a high elevation, just so I could fully encompass what actually happened at those farms. After I collected all of that, I had to bring the soils back into the lab. That's where the majority of my work was. I was looking at the role of two different genes in learning and memory. Um, one of those genes was called KC1, which is a really interesting gene because it's very, very similar to a gene that humans have that's also very important for memory. And I was looking at the role of that gene in different types of memory tests. Before I came to Hampshire, I was always really interested in science, but I never really thought about studying it full time. Um, but when I got here, I just kind of fell in love with the way that Hampshire does science. So the Hampshire way of approaching science is essentially to just do it. And this gives you a really great understanding of the techniques you're doing and, and sort of why you're doing it. At other places, you might sort of be handed protocols and handed answers, whereas here, you're sort of given a problem and you have to troubleshoot or you know, you're in the lab sort of working and something doesn't work and you don't know why and you have to go back and sort of figure it out from step A. And this really gives you a leg up when sort of thinking about science in, in the future and what it means. It's very inquiry driven and very project driven and what we do here that no one else does is as an undergraduate student, you're encouraged to go and explore and learn and make mistakes and do your own experiments and think up your own ideas. Um, and what's really unique about a Division III rather than a normal senior thesis at another school is that you're not, you know, at another school when you do a senior thesis you're usually taking on a part of someone else's research, you're usually just doing a piece of a professor's research. But at Hampshire you're really encouraged to come up with your own research questions and design your own experiments. I went from being pre-med to studying ecology to eventually finding my way into biogeochemistry. 
And without Hampshire giving me that freedom, there's no way that I would have been able to put these ideas together and to do what I did. I also think there's absolutely no way I would have been prepared to do the research I did because there was a lot of hands-on stuff. I had to address some real questions that I couldn't have gotten from a textbook. And I studied abroad, for example, at Macquarie University. And although that's a great school and it's a great program, it's just so different from Hampshire. And I knew if I spent my entire career there, I would have never been prepared to do what I did for my Division Three. So I think it's actually something I'm really grateful for. I've been accepted to graduate school at Trent University, and uh, I might go, um, but I'm not 100% sure at this point. Finish up the work that I'm doing currently, and uh, then my plan is to get a position in a lab for a year before moving on to graduate school, hopefully within the Boston area. So I'm going to do research work continuing very similar things to my Division Three at either Ohio State or at University of New Hampshire. Then after that, I'm applying to a few graduate programs, studying very similar stuff to my Division Three. I got a job as a post -bac research assistant at the National Institute of Health, where I will be studying neuroplasticity um, and adult neurogenesis, so that will be for the next two years. And then after that, I plan to go on to graduate school to study neurobiology.